So the other day, I found this article titled 12 Ways Companies Manipulate Its Employees by Lucio Bufalmano. I was reading through it and I thought to myself, oh, this is a lot of what I talk about on my channel. And in some cases, I think the author, Lucio, explains things better than I do. And then I thought to myself, wait, why do these seem actually super familiar? Like I've read them before somewhere. So these are Dave Ramsey's core values on the right. And these are the 12 ways that companies manipulate its employees on the left. <laughs> and I'm not saying that Dave Ramsey manipulates his employees. I'm just saying that this article was very, very insightful. So without further ado, let's take a look. Number one, employees matter. Lucio says it's not the employees that matter, it's the output of the employees that matter. And if you take away the output from the employee, the employee becomes a cost, then see how much you really matter. That's the hypocrisy here. Companies will say, we care, you matter, this and that. You only matter as far as your existence to turn a profit for the company matters. But no company will ever tell you that, and this should be common sense to people. It's just business is what they'll tell you, right? But at the same time, they'll also tell you it's more than business, and we're a family, and we have a culture, and we're changing the world and all this stuff. So let's look at the second, we're a team, why it's a corporate lie. There are many reasons to be team players, but there are also many good reasons to be selfish. Being a team player benefits the corporation, while being selfish benefits the individual. True. 100%. Don't be completely selfless in life at any job, and people will love to stick it to you for that. Come on, man, be a team player and guilt trip you on whatever it is. But as Lucio says here, the most Machiavellian players profess team playing values while maximizing for themselves. That, again, is spot on. That's exactly what you have to do at work. Let me read you the quote here. We're a team of selfish individuals who must hide their selfish drives with teamwork appearances. Hug the guy at the company party and say, it's great to see you again, meanwhile planning how you're going to get the promotion over him. Like, if you want to be smart as an employee, then be selfish at work. It's your life. It's not the CEO's life. You're working your life away for the CEO's life. I thought this was very insightful. The most successful political operators indeed play a bit for the team, pretend to play a lot for the team, but mostly maximize for their own interest. And I think that's the case for for mostly everyone in politics. They're just gonna tell you what you wanna hear to get your vote and then go do whatever it is they wanna do. That's what CEOs do too. You don't think these people haven't figured this out? When an employee starts thinking about what's best for them and what's best for their life and their family and their goals and their dreams, companies hate that. Then they start to come down and they start to try to appease you with like, oh, here's the 3% raise. I know I know, we said we couldn't give you one, but I, I talked to someone and, and here's a little raise and they'll try to placate you and bring you back down to stop thinking these thoughts and make you feel like they care about you again. Here's another good one. When owners are inherently biased towards the whole because they own the whole and what's good for the whole isn't necessarily good for you. All right, let's look at number three. We're a dream team. Well, uh, mathematically, it doesn't add up. Dream teams are, by definition, a minority. So here's a quick test you can do to see if your executive is lying to you. Ask them how much they get paid. Because it's only a dream team if everyone's on a dream salary, right? If you're at or around market salary or what's competitive, then you are not on a dream team. There's no shame in that. It just means that you're being a victim of another corporate lie. First of all, it is no dream job and dream team because in my dreams, I'm not working. But if I was, then it would have a dream salary, not competitive market rates. So again, dream team is a lie. Like how can every company have a dream team? It's just not possible. Number four, we're a family. I talked about this already. You're not a family at all. If anything, you're more like a sports team owned by someone who benefits from the sports team. But if someone doesn't pull their weight, then the other players will recognize that and be like, hey, bro, get off. Family doesn't fire family members. They don't lay you off without notice. They don't pu pull your health care. They don't try to fight you in court. That's not what family does, you know, like good families, okay? So the next ones we're going to look at here is number five, our goal is to change the world for the better. And number 12, appeals to legacy drive, because both of these things are just trying to appeal to people who want to be part of something bigger than themselves. Now, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. It's just that companies are using that specifically even when they aren't changing the world, even when they don't matter, even when they are a tiny little startup. That's what they use to get people to come join their company. But let's see what Lucio has to say. Nobody is out to win and succeed for themselves. And nobody wants the limelight because of their narcissistic tendencies. Why does corporate frame their missions with lofty ideals? Well, for one, because the owner looks better than you. You know, kinder and pro-social rather than selfish. If you go look at Elizabeth Holmes, the fraudster CEO of Theranos, then you can see her talking about, it's not the money. It's the vision. Meanwhile, she's actively defrauding investors and now she's in jail. The youngest billionaire in the world. Mm -hmm. Is that heady when you hear that? You know, it's, it's not what matters. Um, what matters is how well we do in trying to make people's lives better. I mean, that's, that's why I'm doing this. That's why I work the way that I work. And 
That's why I love what I'm doing so much. And psychology tells us that intrinsic motivators like higher goals and ideals can drive people more so than extrinsic motivators like money and benefits. And companies will profit off of that. You're not working for me, you're working for the higher calling, remember? Here is something from Dave's page specifically. A higher calling matters. If you play for something bigger than yourself, you'll play much harder and smarter. The same holds true for your team. You will be surprised by how hard everyone works when there's a sense of calling. <laughs> Again, I'm not saying that Dave Ramsey manipulates his employees. I'm just saying that this article is very, very insightful. Now, I'm going to give you a completely hypothetical scenario. This is completely hypothetical of what could happen in the United States uh, by using these tactics here. So let's say I'm a terrible, crappy CEO. I want to make a lot of money fast. How do I do it? Okay, step one. I'm going to find God. Step two, I'm going to make a company that's about helping people because God told me to. Step three, I am going to use that to recruit people to my company because they're not joining my mission. They're joining God's mission. Step four, when people step out of line, you discipline them and say, it's not me disciplining you. It's God disciplining you. The financial guru is talking to his staff, unaware he's being recorded. I'm so tired of being falsely accused of being a jerk when all I was doing was trying to help people stay in line. In line with what he says are biblical principles. I'm, I'm just saying, like, this is a hypothetical scenario where, um, you know, you could just use God and religion as a way to prevent yourself from being attacked while also treating your people and employees shitty because you can just be like, oh, look, I'm a godly man too. I'm just like you. I'm just following the same Bible as you while also raking in tons of profit and treating people like garbage. Like, do you not see this as a possible scenario in the world? Because this completely hypothetical scenario could have happened and might be happening today. You don't think smart people that want to do bad things haven't figured that out? Of course, they'll just stand in front of religion and be like, oh, see, look. Now let's look at number 10. We are driven by values. And if we look over here on the right, we can see righteous living. We believe that character matters all the time. But the, here's the thing about Dave Ramsey's company. As far as I know, and as far as the other people that have worked there that have been fired for breaking the righteous living, there is no form that says what righteous living is defined as. That gets to be decided if you break it. Was that bad enough to discount righteous living? Mm, yeah, okay, fired. If they don't tell you what defines righteous living... If they don't give you a list or anything like that, it's a little subjective, it's a little scary. You know, they just bring you in and be like, you're not righteous. No, just me. Now let's look at number eight and nine. We win together or lose together. We work hard, play hard. Self-employed mentality. We all care and take responsibility like we own the place. Companies love to push this like it's a benefit, but it makes no sense. As a business owner, I would never expect my intern to have as much care about my videos and my channel as I do because it's not his company. I assume they would say something boomer like, well, don't you just work hard to take pride in your work and get better at your skill? Work like you own the place, you know? But I don't. It's not mine. I don't control the profits. I don't control who gets a raise. I don't control if I get a raise. I don't control what gets reinvested where. That's like, why would I work like I own it when I don't? You just want me to play pretend? Are, are you talking to me like I'm a six-year-old now? So whenever you see this self-employed mentality, I would say this is a red flag. All right, so let's look at share the profits. We win together, we lose together. It sounds wholesome, right? Sounds really nice. When the team loses, the CEO gets a golden handshake and you get the sack. When the team wins, the big shareholders get the cash and you get a pat on the back, a pittance and a useless corporate party that will steal even more of your personal time. A rising tide lifts all boats, he said, but I'm still here fishing my ass off. We win together, we lose together. Just look, just remember this meme. This article is pretty good. Like here's one on um, Bill Gates, like fumbling over his words, trying to explain how taxes should work. Okay, so then we have number seven. We care about the stakeholder, not just the shareholders. I'll let you guys read this one. This one, it's good, it's insightful, but it doesn't really have anything to do with what I'm trying to show you. So let's look at the rest of Dave Ramsey's core values here, just on their own. So let's have a little bit of a laugh here. So this one is good. This one is probably my favorite one. Fear not. We don't make decisions based on fear. Dave. 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 If you don't make decisions based on fear, why would you ever feel the need to brandish a firearm at work in a meeting? This is factual information from a court deposition. You can go type in Dave Ramsey brings gun to meeting and you'll either find my video or the court deposition documents showing the transcript of what was being said in the courtroom that day. We don't make decisions based on fear because you have a gun. Why'd you bring a gun to work at all? Like, what are you doing? You just gonna pull out the nine and set it on the table? Why would you do that? What is the purpose of that? Unless you were literally just there to show and tell and you have every, like, 
Um, let's see. No gossip one. We pass negatives up and positives all around. So, I mean, it sounds nice, right? No gossip. But that essentially means you can't complain about anything to anyone else other than your manager. What if you don't like your manager or your manager doesn't like you? You are effectively cut off from being able to provide your concerns to anyone that will listen. Because if you go talk to someone else, that's gossip and you'll be punished for that. So this is, in my opinion, a really, really unhealthy policy. Honestly, benefits Dave the most because then everyone just stays quiet, which again, makes sense. But, you know, they don't make decisions based on fear there, as you can see. So let's look at the next one here. Never give up. We impose our will on the marketplace. Dave, as an entrepreneur, you don't get to decide the marketplace. The marketplace decides and you can either play along or not. Shoot sacred cows. We stick by our principles. We challenge traditions. Like one of the most hilarious ones because Dave is the most traditional boomer I know, dude. Like, come on. <laughs> we challenge traditions. What tradition? If we help enough people, we don't have to worry about money. Like, what is this we? Where is the we? And what is enough people? Like, can that be defined? Is there a goal? Is there a target number here? And then are you saying that if that happens, all of the people that work at your company will never have to worry about money again? Anyways, this entire website, The Power Moves, is just about power and how people use power to manipulate other people. Now, it's not an instructional guide of like, you should go do this and become powerful and get what you want out of life. I think it's meant to be more educational. Learn how to recognize people that are narcissistic or people that use power to manipulate others covertly, you know? Like, it's a guide to learn from. Don't go here and read this and be like, oh, here's a tool I can use to fuck someone over today. Like, don't, don't do that. But I think it helps to recognize these things and these patterns and these behaviors and I don't know. I think it's really valuable. So uh, if you want, obviously go read this with a grain of salt, you know, take what you want out of it. Every, you know, I don't agree with everything in here, but I mean, that's how life is, right? We agree on most things, but not on everything. Yeah. Go read this and see this for yourself. But like this page right here, 21 conflicts of interest, your boss doesn't want you to know. I could make an entire video about this, but I think if I wanted to do that, I'd probably just bring Lucio on the channel. So Lucio, if you see this video, which I hope you do, Let's, let's come on and let's talk about corporate and power dynamics and how they can manipulate people. Because I have some examples of companies I'd like to hear your thoughts on. Shout out to Lucio for making these. These are a lot of hard truths. Anyways, guys, that was today's video. Share the video if you enjoyed it. I think it helps a lot of people to know these 12 ways. There's probably way more than 12. Let's be honest. Leave a like. Subscribe if you'd like to see me call out the corporate world some more and tell you how they're taking advantage of you without you really realizing it. I know no one will hire me again, and I know that you can't speak out, so go ahead and send me anything you got. I'm happy to roast them on the channel. If you'd like to, there are some links down in the description that support the channel. You can check them out if you want. No pressure. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great weekend.